Thank you. Uh, I'm just conscious that we're overrunning slightly. Um, I'd now like to introduce you to my colleague, Fiona Ward, who will present findings on a research project involving community engagement and air quality. Thank you. This short presentation is about our themes work on community engagement in air quality. I'd just like to talk to you about our journey so far and some of the considerations for us to think about. Also some thoughts about next steps for this area of work. So just to take a step back and explain why we're looking at air quality and why we're looking at community engagement. Firstly, because it's an important health, uh, public health issue. So air pollution has a detrimental impact resulting in long-term health conditions and premature death. And evidence also suggests that people living in disadvantaged areas are disproportionately affected. And this has been called a triple jeopardy where greater exposure to air pollution, poor health and other psychological and social stresses combine to have a negative impact on quality of life. And our ARC health equity lens also demands that we look upstream at the social, economic and environmental determinants rather than simply at the health consequences. Also, air quality demands collective action. So it requires change at, at the policy level, at organisational and individual practice. And no one person changing their behaviour is going to make a significant difference, but these things need to combine. We, and we want to involve communities. So as guidance from lo to local authorities from DEFRA, who the responsible government department says, uh, communities have experiential knowledge and working with them can help determine the issues on the ground and the solutions best suited to local circumstances. And if anybody's familiar with the Marmot review into health inequalities, this is described as being part of a process of creating the conditions for individuals to take control of their lives. So our journey started with our work in the Old Swan neighbourhood for learning as part of the Clark who focused on air quality. And it was clear in the early days of the ARC that air quality was still an important issue for our member organisations and also public advisors. And to test this more widely, the first thing we did was to conduct some group conversations with residents in Blackburn, Ellesmere Port and Liverpool to explore wider public perceptions of air quality and the extent to which this was a priority issue for them. And also look at the ways that they'd been involved in local air quality plans and consultations or not, as the case may be. We then reviewed local authority action plans this time last year um, their annual air quality status reports as well that they have to produce and other documents that were available online. And the findings from that suggested that there was a lot of advice given to residents about how they could reduce their air pollution footprint. There were some consultation exercises around specific plans, uh, but a relatively small number of other community engagement activities but there were, however, indications that more engagement activity was being planned in some areas. So the, our next step was to gather more insight about the approaches that had been used to engage communities. And to do this, we conducted a review of the academic literature. And this was undertaken jointly by the EPIC theme and the IMPACT theme with a review working group that was made up of public advisors, colleagues from two local authorities, and also from a social enterprise. And on the EPIC pages of the ARC website, there are uh, research bites um, covering the review of local authority plans and the early findings of the review. Um, the full review has been submitted to a journal and we're hoping it'll be published in the near future. We've also been connecting internally with within the ARC with the Improving Population Health 
and the health and care in informatics theme around their air quality work and with other ARCs as well, particularly ARC West, who are currently looking at how local authorities in their area make decisions that affect air quality and the data that contributes to these decisions and also any public involvement in these processes. At the same time as we've been doing this work, other things have clearly been happening. So some research studies have highlighted the link between air pollution and higher COVID-19 mortality and morbidity. And there's also been a move to building back better. You might have heard that phrase. The first lockdown in particular gave people a taste of clean air where traffic volumes um, fell dramatically. And it's led to many cities across the world to think more about what they might do differently. The government's active travel fund was part of a response to this and it's provided grants to support local transport authorities to produce cycling and walking facilities and also the parliamentary environment food and rural affairs committees recently produced a report entitled air quality and coronavirus a glimpse of a different future or business as usual and amongst their recommendations was more funding for active travel um, measures in the clean air strategy to reduce long-term health inequalities associated with air pollution and changes to the environment bill to reflect the scale and urgency of the challenge of air quality. Several local authorities in the northwest and elsewhere have developed climate emergency, declared climate emergencies and they're developing plans to tackle various aspects of this including air pollution. And there's also been other research, including in the Northwest. One piece of work's been produced um, last year the, by the British Lung Foundation, their report into the health and economic impacts of toxic air in the Liverpool city region. And we know of a number of local projects, and I guess you may know of others, that are addressing issues around air quality such as those funded by the Liverpool City Region Community Environment Fund. Um, there's one at Place Education, a community interest company, setting up youth-led environment and climate change workshops, and also the development of Sefton Council's Clean Air Crew Education Tool. So in terms of further work in this area in the northwest coast, there are a number of things we need to consider if we're thinking about ARC supporting local organisations and communities. First of all, can we build on the momentum from the growing concern about climate change and the impact of air pollution on health? As the government committees asked, is it a different future or do we go back to business as usual? One thing our scoping review did highlight was there are a range of options available for community engagement in, in air quality with positive outcomes in a variety of community contexts, including in areas of disadvantage. So there are some inspiring examples we can look at. But the review also found that further work's needed to explore the impact of community engagement on health and air quality outcomes. A wider set of goals needs to be considered in the early stages of these participatory project, projects so we can better understand the pathways from community engagement to addressing the wider determinants of health, as well as the very positive short-term outcomes that are reported. And there are also a number of concerns, considerations for systems working. So that's local people working with health services, local government, voluntary and private sector organisations. One of them is that community awareness is key. Our resident conversations illustrated that not everybody recognised that air quality was an issue until the conversations got started. In one group, somebody said, air pollution is something that people associate with other countries like India and China. And suggestions have been made that it's best to make it personal and talk directly about the health impact rather than talk about air quality. We also need to consider the capacity of individual residents and organisations, in particular 
in terms of organisations, local environmental protection, public health and health providers to work collaboratively on this topic. Um, working upstream is difficult when there are immediate downstream issues to address. And finally, it's clear that collaborations need to be maintained over the longer term to be able to look at the impact of community engagement on these wider outcomes of air quality, health and health inequalities. Thank you, Fiona. Um, I think everyone will agree there's some really interesting insights from the, um, the review, some of the issues that potentially are impacting on future research, but also about the application of where the community engagement role fits in with the overall change of direction, whether it be research, practice. Um, so there will be opportunity now to pick up on some of the things that you've just heard in Fiona's presentation. Uh, we're going to put you into randomly allocated breakout rooms um, and they'll be facilitated by a member of the EPIC team. But just to refresh your memories, we want to have some conversation about what you, what you think about what you've just heard, what, if any, are the possible implications for your practice, your community, the organisation you work with, and also how does the research address and, and consider health inequalities. So if we can be put into our breakout rooms, and um, we're running slightly over time, so we've reduced the amount of chat, unfortunately, to six minutes, I'll then bring, reconvene you back. And if there's any burning questions, we can take them at that time. Uh, thanks, Sam. So if you just want to click on where it says join for your breakout rooms, and then you'll automatically be pulled back after six minutes. Thank you.